This is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. How are you? It's Alex Bennett, and this is The Ramble. Sorry for that little screw-up. I got a new thing from... I I got a new promo from uh, uh, Rob, and it's a great promo. Uh, The only problem is it uh, it goes too long beyond the actual promo, and so we had a lot of dead air, and I was trying to figure out how to get out of that dead air. And uh, I hope if you're watching the video, the... uh, Gabnet logo started okay because it was kind of fast. Oh, well, forget it. It's It, it was just a little bit of a, a mess. I'll go have to fix it later, and, uh, and we'll have a brand new promo. But it, as I say, he had a promo that lasted uh, for uh, 2 minutes and 48 seconds when the actual promo only runs about a minute. So anyway, that's that. Anyway, the reason you're not seeing a picture of me is because we have, as usual, a guest on tonight's program. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time once again for Larry Bubbles Brown. Hello, Lawrence. How are you? Back from the West Coast. It's uh, <laughs> I love this time change. It's uh, dark around noon now. Very pleasant. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I barely noticed it. This Wait, what is this? Hold on a second. Oh, there we go. Something was happening with my monitor here, and I didn't. I couldn't. All of a sudden, you disappeared. Oh. Okay. Anyway, so how are you? What is you don't like the new the 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 changeover? And the time. I feel I'm going to feel like I'm hung over the next three months. I just don't adjust to it, and uh, it. I don't know why they do it. Two states don't do it, but uh, maybe I should move to Arizona. Yes, Arizona doesn't do it, do they? And nor Hawaii. Nor Hawaii. And parts of Indiana, but not the whole state. Wait a minute. Now, that's a bit confusing. Yeah. Part, I think half of Indiana doesn't change. Why, yeah. why is that? I, I guess it's up to the counties. <laughs> God. Isn't life terrible? I mean, yeah, the way people make these decisions. Well, we'll have daylight savings time, but we won't on this part of the state. Hey, I'm going over to Bob's house in the next city. Oh, well, that's what time are you going to get there? Two hours from now. How long does it take? An hour. Yeah. The time warp in Indiana. Yeah, the time warp in Indiana. Well, everything's strange in Indiana, isn't that it? That would be true, yeah. It's uh, 1950 yeah. there. Didn't they do a show, a TV show called Erie, Indiana, about the, the town that in Indiana that's just all weird and ghostly and stupid? Yeah, yeah, when was that? I remember a couple of years thought, ago. I remember it was not a bad show either. It was actually a pretty good show. Yeah, but um, so uh, you know what I wanted to ask you, and, and I failed to ask you this because I'm so concerned with myself every time I call. Uh, <laughs> well, you're and, more interesting. So and, we'd really and, hear about and, you. No, <laughs> you're you're very interesting yourself in a very dull sort of way. Okay. <laughs> like a- uh, so let's uh, let's just for a second. Focus on you. Okay. I've, you know, I sat around. As comfortable wonder- as that makes me. I was wondering, and I think somebody called me up and even asked me this question. What is the average day for Larry Brown like? In other words, what do you do during the day? I know what I do. I basically sit here, do uh, some interviews like with you and uh, do a show. And then when I'm not doing that, I jerk off to porn. But anyway. <laughs> Um, but you can't do that on dial-up. <laughs> but you, <laughs> it's it's very slow masturbation if you do it on dial-up. You'll be it's there like, for days. It's like, when did you start? Oh, last March. <laughs> you know, I'm still buffering. Yeah, I'm <laughs> There's nothing worse. You, you know what I used to love is when. Remember in the early days of cable. When you didn't subscribe to HBO and you went over to HBO and it looked like a uh, um, uh, an abstract painting, yeah, 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 you know, and it was all wiggly and everything. That's how they they made it so you couldn't see the the picture, mm-hmm. and you would sit there trying to decode it in your mind. Well, that's kind of like yeah. that's kind of like porn on dial up. 
you know. Remember, it was kind of easy to uh, back in those days. I had friends you could you could steal cable pretty easily. You didn't you messed around with the antenna and somehow you could get it. Well, what they did in our apartment house in uh, downtown in the early days of cable is they is they wired all the apartments, cabled all the apartments. The only thing is, they cabled them on the inside. So the cable ran through a closet on the inside of the apartment. So all you had to do was cut into the wire, put a tap on it, and just run cable into your entire apartment. Well, they got smart to that after a couple of years, and they moved all the cabling to the outside into the hallways. But up until that time, they couldn't do anything. If they came to you and knocked on your door, cable company, we think you're stealing cable. Can we come in, please? No. No. <laughs> okay, warrant. well, we'll see you later then, I guess. You know, I mean, that's that's the way it was. But anyway, so what is the average day for Larry Brown like? In other words, you... you the average day is very simple. I get up around between 10 and 11. Mm-hmm. And Usually you, I, you get up early for this, right? This is this is about the time I get up, so oh, it's, not, okay. it's not a stretch. You know? Yeah, okay, so you get up around 10. That's about the same as I do. And I will go out and run five to six miles. That's something I don't do. Okay. You run and five or six and I will five, wait a minute, get five, on my <laughs> five, five or six miles? Yeah, I'm not as not very fast, but uh So how long does that take you? An hour. So an hour. That keeps the weight off. Yeah, yeah. I would and say I, five uh, or six miles would. If I just walked one mile I would probably lose some more weight. You know, so. Yeah, I should probably, as getting older, walking is probably better for you anyway. It's, it does take a pounding. Uh, yeah, you, you haven't gotten shin splints or anything like that yet? No, the knees sometimes are getting a little sore now, but I've been, I've been running for 30 years. So. Wow. I didn't know that about you. Yeah. Are, are you athletic in any other way? Uh, I was very good at hitting baseballs when I was younger. I remember so. you used to go to the batting cages. Yeah, I go to the batting I could hit 90 miles an hour. <laughs> really? Yes, I'm very decept- deceptively athletic. <laughs> I mean, nobody would take you for athletic. <laughs> but if you're running like six miles a day, you got to be you got to be in pretty good shape. Yeah, I think I'm okay. So I, I did it because I got such crappy cholesterol. I was trying to get my good cholesterol up, and it did do that a bit. So. Do you remember the time? I think it was Stephen Pearl who decided that he would start working out or something, or he bought some weights for his home. No, really? And, and he started doing <laughs> exercises and got so muscular he looked disgusting. No, really? And, and he had to stop it. I think it was Pearl. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's hilarious. <laughs> you know, but I don't work out because I have a theory, which everybody's heard a million times, and that is if you don't use your body, it won't wear out. That was the same theory of the first man to walk on the moon, uh, Neil Armstrong. Really? He didn't exercise. He thought your body had a finite amount of heartbeats, and he didn't. <laughs> oh, really? Oh, yeah, good, because uh-huh. I'm glad he agrees. Did he die? good company, yeah. Did he die old? He's still alive. Oh, he's still alive. Oh, okay. You know, he's probably, well, the moonwalk was 69. That was, uh, he's probably in his 80s. And then he taught the moonwalk to Michael Jackson. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, no, I, did, I, I forgot that he is still alive, isn't he? Mm-hmm. Or, I'm, I thought he died. Uh, I could have, my short-term memory is really horrible, but I'm, Almost sure he's alive. Yeah, well, I, I'm going to, I'll go with you. Wait a minute, hold on a second. I can even look it up here. Neil Armstrong. I just type From in. From Wapakoneta, that. Ohio. Really? Let me see if, mm-hmm. if, you're, if you're right. Neil Armstrong. Neil Armstrong. Okay. Uh, let me see here. We immediately go to the Wikipedia because that's always got the best. Uh, he was born. In, <laughs> you're absolutely right. How do you know things like this? I remember that. Wapakoneta. How, how could you forget that? Well, I mean, even pronouncing it. I had to look at it to figure out how it was pronounced. He's 82. He's alive, right? And he, he, oh, no, he died. He died. Uh-oh. I got you. I ah. got you. I got you. I got you. 
<laughs> when did he go? He went. Uh, Oh, try try this. Um, uh, 2012. I have no memory of that at all. Wow. You knew this town he was from. And actually, he wasn't born in Wapakoneta, Ohio. He was born near Wapakoneta, Ohio. <laughs> and uh, he died at 82. Uh, and uh, that's about it. Uh USAF, Man in Space, Soonest, uh, Selection, ABAs, Total EVAs, One, Total EVA Time, Two Hours and 31 Minutes. So that must be the mission on the moon because that would be an extra, uh, extra, uh, what they call it, uh, extra vehicular activity. So uh, Now, the uh, you talk about people with memory. You know, Mary Lou Henner remembers every day of her life. Yeah. And uh, this ties into the moonwalk. She was being interviewed by Bob Costas and, uh, years ago, and he said, what were you doing the night of the moonwalk? And she just started laughing hysterically, and it turns out that was the night she lost her virginity. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Very famous story. Very famous story. Wow. That's, uh, that's interesting. Yeah. Yeah, I I interviewed her once, and you know, of course, we did the whole memory bit because that's the only thing she's known for now, not not as being a, an actress, you know. But yeah, but she remembers every day of her life. It's amazing. Well, there's some people. I mean, you're that way in a lot of ways. I can remember some days, but nothing like that. That's incredible. No, but I mean, I can ask you, and the one thing we always used to like to play with you, and we've done here, is that we name a. Uh, a date, and you tell us what day of the week it fell on. Usually, yeah. I mean, if I said I was born December eighteenth, nineteen thirty-nine, what day of the week was it? That was a Monday. See, da da. I didn't even know that. Now I assume you're right. Well, we can. Uh, you can. <laughs> How do you do that on the computer? Oh, here you. I just put in December eighteenth, December eighteen, nineteen. 39, and I press that, and it says, uh, what does it say? What happened on this day? Oh, wait a minute. It usually, oh, what day of the week? Okay, here we go. It was a Monday. There you go. Absolutely. We didn't get you. We didn't get you. And that's because I can't remember back to 1939, but the calendar repeats every 28 years, so I was looking at 1967. So you were looking at 1967. Mm -hmm. So in other words, 1939... Would be the, the calendar would be exactly the same as 1967. I see. And then how do you know the calendar from 1967? I just remember I was alive then. I remember certain dates. I remember that December 15th was a Friday. I think we're getting excited because uh, getting ready for Christmas vacation in high school. Mm hmm Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's amazing. Son of a bitch. It's pretty incredible that you remember well, those kind of things. The calendar thing is, I like the fact that calendar repeats every 28 years. It'll repeat yeah. before then, usually, but every 28 years for sure. So you've got a method to doing this. There's a certain method, yeah, but you got to remember certain days to, to plot things from. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but I, did, I just read that uh, every 400 years, apparently, they do not have a leap year. So there was not a leap year in 1900. There was no, Wait a minute. Every 400 years, there's no leap year? Yeah. Wow. Why is that? I guess that's another adjustment, right? Another adjustment for the uh, movement of the planets and everything, yeah. But how... Uh, Here's what I'm, I mean, I'm questioning. It's pretty smart to figure that out so long ago. Well, did they figure that out long ago, or did they just figure that yeah, out yeah. In, by the time uh, by the time 2000 rolled around? See, that's mm -hmm. what I'm thinking. You know, they figured it out a long time ago. No, they they really figured it out 400 years before yeah. that. They didn't have a leap year either. No. I mean, I when did we start? Back having, well, it goes back to at least 1600. I think they had to think about you know. Uh, um, having leap years you know they had to they yeah. had to figure that out too so when did they start doing that you know we should look that up right um let me see here i just type in the word leap year 
Leap year. Okay, and it usually has some questions. Is there a February 29th in 2017? No, there wouldn't no. be. It'd be on the. Uh, it's always on an even year, right? It's always every four years. It's always an election year. Six twenty sixteen. Oh, it is an election year. Okay. Uh, what would day would it be? It was no leap year. Uh, why are there leap years? Why are there no leap years every hundred years? Leap. Uh, there is a leap year every year whose number is perfectly divisible by four, except for years that are both divisible by 100 and not divisible by 400. Okay. I can't even follow that. <laughs> the second part of the, rude, uh, the rule affects the century years. For example, the century years 1600 and 2000 are leap years, but they are century years. So 1700, 1800, and 1900 are not. Mm-hmm. I guess. Okay, all right. So, um, the second part of the rule affects century years. For example, century years, 1600 are leap years. Oh, I see. In, in other words, there was a, a leap year in 2000, but there wasn't in 1900. Right. See? Okay. Mm -hmm. This is stuff I'm sure my audience just tuned in for. <laughs> Mind numbing. Huh? Mind numbing. <laughs> Well, you, you set me off on these tangents. You know, I'm 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 just trying to find out what happens in the average day of of, of uh, Larry Brown, and I can't well, seem that's to good find. Well, you're still inquisitive. So, oh yeah, so I, I do my run. Yeah, he does his run, and he, he does it on leap years as well. Go ahead. Then I uh, come. Uh, then I come back, and uh, I'll check my email. Mm -hmm. Have a, I'll usually have a garden burger. A garden and burger. I then I hate my apartment, and I have to get out of the city, so I get in the car, and I'll go over to Alameda or Sunnyvale, and I'll sit in the car and try to write and kill time, and then I'll go to a comedy club and hang out. That's the, well, my wait, entire wait, wait day. A wait a minute. Let me, let, me, let me get this straight. You leave the house. When do you leave the house? Uh, around 2 to beat the traffic. which is. So then you drive to Sunnyvale? Mm-hmm. Why? Or Alameda. Why? They got good. It's got good light down. I just have to get out of the city. I don't know. I don't like. I don't like to be here. <laughs> you are weird. It's cold and miserable. You know what I would do whenever I wanted to get out of the city. What I would do is I'd drive over to Marin because I. Would, yeah. You know, I was born. That's in, not a bad place to go. Sometimes I go there up to Nevada. I was raised in Marin. I wasn't born there, but I was raised in Marin, and I. Uh, so I always I know Marin County better than I know the city, actually. So Marin County is actually very cool. Um, home of the last building made by Frank Lloyd Wright. That's correct. You are absolutely correct, sir. And I will tell you another fair. interesting story about that. I was living in San Anselmo, and I looked across the, you know, I lived on the hill, and I looked across the hill to another hill, and I know some guy was building a strange-looking house. So I drove my little car up there, and I walked up to the house, and the guy was uh, was still in the process of being built. And I said, "This is an amazing home. Oh, how? Where did you get the plans for it?" And he said, "Frank Lloyd Wright." I said, okay. "What?" He said, "Yeah." He said, "I worked for him on the Marin County project, and he just drew me up a quick plan of a house, <laughs> and I'm building." Really? It. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So that may actually be the last thing he ever built, you know, I'd or he ever did. that. Yeah. But the, in Marin County, people have never gone there. Uh, there, is a, uh, there is a very strange-looking building as you drive down Highway 101, and that is the Marin County Civic Center, which when it first opened, everybody, I didn't, but most everybody hated it. They wanted, they wanted to tear it down. They thought it was ugly. Mm -hmm. And now, of course, it's considered one of Frank Lloyd Wright's greatest achievements. And yeah, I like it. It's kind of interesting. It's it's got, uh, well, it's built so that he he believed that you didn't landscape. In other words, you didn't cut down a hill to put in a building. You know, you built the building into the hill. So if you look at it, this thing rests on several hills. 
Uh, and it's uh, amazing. If anybody ever saw the movie Gattaca, uh, it was used as the uh, the Gattaca Corporation because it's it's one of those buildings that's so. Whenever Frank Lloyd Wright did something, you can't take his architecture and place it anywhere in time. It is so of itself, you know. That's true. Yeah. So you could use it as a building of the future or an old building of the ancient past in Tibet. You know, I mean, it's it's strange. But uh, and then you go uh, you go to Chicago. I lived in uh, Riverdale. Uh, not Riverdale. That was where I moved in New York. Where was it? If something's I can't remember the name of the city. It's, it's, but I moved to the suburb of, of of Chicago, and it was where Frank Lloyd Wright originally lived. And there's a whole street of nothing but homes designed by Frank Lloyd Wright. Jeez. Yeah. And he That would be amazing. I remember I took a tour of one of these building one of these homes, and it's where he invented the endless ceiling. Have you heard about this concept? Do you ever notice when you sometimes and a lot of people have adopted this for architecture, you go into a building, you go into a room, and you notice there's a window, it goes up. But there's a ledge that comes down, so the idea looks like the window goes on forever. Do you know what I'm talking about? No. no. In other words, you, you walk in, you look at a uh, at a, at, at a, uh, uh, a w- the window, and there is a lip that comes down, so the window keeps going up behind it. And that was his design because it made it look like the window never ended. That the window could have been thousands of feet high because you don't see the top of it so he was a genius oh he was absolutely i mean he could design my house anytime uh <laughs> and i've never been able to find that house again I, I occasionally when i go to marin i i try to find that house and i can't find it either it's hid hidden by by trees or something like that or um my memory fades and i don't remember exactly where it is we well, gotta find it. Amazing house, amazing Next house. Next time you come out here, we'll look for it. But anyway, I go over to Marin. Uh, uh, I used to go to Marin a lot. That was like my regular. I probably paid more tolls on that bridge than any human being in history. And uh, I wouldn't do it all the time now because of the price of the goddamn bridge. What is it? It's up to seven dollars or something? Or six seventy five. Six seventy five. That's go. if you got the fast pass. If you pay, you can't pay cash. Otherwise, it's seven seventy five. And, and if you don't have a fast pass, what do you do? You just go through, and it, they take your license. They just take, it takes a picture. If they mail you the bill, and then you send them seven dollars and yeah, seventy five seven, cents. Seven seventy five. Yeah. Seven seventy five. Wow. Wow. Very, uh, what are the tolls in New York? I don't know. I don't drive a car. I don't have a car here, um, but I think the the George Washington Bridge is fifteen dollars. Jesus, wow! I mean, that's one way you can go both ways on the fifteen dollars, right? You know, they have yeah. no toll going in, or maybe they do it going in. No, they have no. They don't have any going in to New Jersey, but they have it coming out. You know, so you pay fifteen dollars. So it's seven fifty each way. Um, so oh, somebody's calling me. They can go. Oh, and you know what it is? It's one of those. Oh, listen, all my, all my, all my, all my phones, uh, all my things go off at once. See, hear that? That's my tablet. And it's <laughs> and I get a m- message here because I have a thing in my phone that it's a robocaller. So a robocaller has interrupted our fine discussion. But, but it was uh, Neil Armstrong. Anyway, so I, uh, you know, I always used to like to go to Marin. I don't know. I would never go down to Sunnyvale or Alameda. That, that, I don't know why that appeals to you. <laughs> well, I go to Marin more if that damn bridge didn't cost. So and then much. what do you do? Sit in the car? I sit in the car and try to write. Really? Get little, yeah, no, I don't come up with much. So I think I'm pretty much at the end of the road. You, you can't come up with jokes anymore. I never they're hard you know it's hard to come up with material well some people I don't know is it for everybody some people it's easy but uh, there are guys like Feldman who used to like come up with jokes he was a joke machine 
however, the quality of the jokes wasn't up to, say, what the quality of yours were. Well, well I mean, because he's, <laughs> because he's dealing in volume, you know. I mean, I, I often said to him, it must be a terrible thing for you to have to deal with the fact that you write something for, say, Bill Maher, and once he uses it on his TV show, it's his. You can't ever yeah. use that joke, you know. But he can forever in his act because he paid you for it, you know. Hey, listen, we've run out of time already. We just flew by. Yeah, and we, and we barely found out what happens to uh, Bubbles in his day. <laughs> well, that, we'll save that for another time. Although I think barely anything happens in a daily bubble. Anyway. <laughs> the, thrilling, the thrilling end of my day will be discovered soon. <laughs> yes, yeah, soon on this program. Next mm -hmm. week, same time, same bad channel. You hey, Bubs, thanks a lot. Thank you. Bye. Yeah. This is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. And here we are, ladies and gentlemen. You know, i got to turn a light on here. Hold on a second. Oh, boy. See, I, I, do, I forget to do stuff. And then, there, then you can get more light on me. It's more, it's more flattering. See? See? Huh? Huh? See? See? See how, how that works? Isn't that nice? Oh, boy. Yeah, okay. Anyway, hi, how are you? What's what's happening? Uh let me uh let me see here. I got to turn on Skype. Let me do a f I forgot to do a few things on Skype like sign in to Skype. Oh boy. Um I just uh, maybe I just don't prepare enough for this show anymore. Oh jeez, almighty. Come on. There we go. Sign in. There we go. There we go. Okay, and uh, we uh, have, um, let's see here. Let me also um, uh, delete a lot of people here that called before because it, uh, uh, I can just clear the way. Uh, well, I'm doing this while I'm waiting for people to call, right? Okay, so they know how to, how to call me. All right, okay. Now I tur turn myself on. And I have to get rid of a few more of these. Delete, 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 and we're ready to go. The lines are open. I'm ready to talk to you folks out there and find out what, uh, what's on your mind this evening on the Citizens Panel. Um, one of these days, I will, I'm go I've got to start just saying, hey, do I have the light on? Do I do this? You know, uh, and I, I'm just not, uh, I'm not of a... Uh, 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 a sufficient mind that I'm doing everything logically anymore. Oh, boy. I don't know. Maybe I'll just give up on this whole thing. Huh? Anyway, let's see if anybody calls now. That's the other element in this program that's uh, extremely important. Uh, if you want to call us, by the way, we use a thing called Skype. Uh, and our, You go to Skype.com and download the program. Very simple. Very simple to start it up. And then you simply go up to the top and say contacts, and you go add contact and put in GabNet Live. And then I will see that, and I will make you a contact. Although I don't, I think you can call me without being a contact, but just to be on the safe side, okay? So if you do it that way, we're, uh, we're okay. Hey, guess who's here? How, uh, 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 ladies and gentlemen, there he is, finally. You're, you're, are you feeling better? Uh, I'm feeling better. Yeah, I uh, started to no more fever as of Saturday. So wow. Yeah. How, how long did this last? It started with a sore throat, tired, achy, and then it went into the fever and all that. By Saturday, Friday night was the last night I had fever. So I'm better. You're better. Oh wow, it's uh, it's something, you know. Yeah, it is. Uh, I hit you all of a sudden. I was fine. And all of a sudden, I had no clue it was coming. Yeah. It's one of those things when you're hanging out like around 8 o'clock at night and all of a sudden you go, hmm, my throat's tightening up. Yeah. And it starts to burn a little bit. And then it gets worse and worse and that's it. So now all I have left is a stuffy so, nose. So how many days was it, were you out with this? 
Uh, well, I didn't miss any work because I worked from home and I had to cancel one customer appointment because you don't want to show up at a customer, you know, sick. Right. But um, so uh, I'm like three and a half days like that. Yeah, okay. By the way, folks, it's going to be a fill a fill free night. I found out the other day. I just remember it's going to be a fill free night. So if you want to call, the coast is clear. Okay. And plus, we need another person so that Rob doesn't look out of sync. There is something that goes on with uh, with uh, Skype, Rob, that I haven't been able to figure out. The first, when I'm talking to one person, they're out of sync. Yeah, when you're I out of sync to me. When I have another person come in, then they're in sync, and you're in sync. Freaking weird. Yeah. And I'm back on my Windows machine here, so I'm back on the Windows version of Skype, which I missed while I was using my Mac. As yeah. much as I love my Mac, I miss the Windows Skype. Well, Windows is I use Windows here to do to put the program out. Is anybody going to call uh, uh, to put the program out and uh, and to take your calls and so on? And it it, it works uh, almost flawlessly, you know. I've uh, I've been very happy with it, except for these weird little things like the out of sync stuff. Well, but I I if I had you over here doing it on my Mac, you'd be out of sync too. Maybe not as much. I don't know. It, it's something, look, it's a Microsoft product. Enough said. Enough said, yeah. Yeah, I mean, they don't, they don't seem to, now you would think they would really care about the Windows version of Skype. And, and most people, when they're talking to grandma and so on, don't mind if it's out of sync. They don't even notice it's out of sync. You know, all they know is they're seeing grandma. Yeah. But when I'm That's, trying to do a show here, you're out of sync. Unless somebody else calls and then he won't be out of sync. Yeah, the phone will ring. I'm real happy tonight because uh, my state didn't let me down. We have a uh, the Democratic governor. Uh-huh. It looks like we're going to do a clean sweep in terms of the, the local, the state house. Mm-hmm. So uh, feeling good about that. We have a new governor. His name is uh, Ralph Northam. Uh-huh. And it would look like a landslide. Well, you had a Democrat before, right? We did, yeah. Yeah. Um, and and then slowly but surely, Virginia is becoming a, a blue state. Yeah. And it's because of all the population that's moving into Fairfax County, Loudoun County, uh, all the counties just uh, outside of the D.C. area. Wow. Prince William County. These are all heavy blue counties. And with all the red in the state, there's no one living there. Son of a bitch. That's, that's cool. So Virginia is becoming a blue state. That's cool. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, it is. Yeah. So I, I didn't. I completely forgot it was election day. By the way, a sign that you are feeling better is you turned out a promo. Well, yeah, and you know what? I didn't have to really do anything except say reason twenty nine. <laughs> <laughs> the rest of it was all pre recorded. So uh, all I had to do was find the the, the stuff. You yeah. know, the, the, I picked last Friday's. It's just program the file was longer than it should have been, and I, I it threw me for a loop because I'm going. He's winding up, and it's still only in the middle of the promo. And you know what happened? They, yeah. uh, in um, Audacity, when I was editing, yeah. I took the end. I, I had a – I cut out – you know, I, I, I want to end it with a sting, right, with, right. The end of the, with the end of the music. Yeah. And I realized that there was still a piece of the music all the way down at the end. <laughs> so when I listened to it, it you know it was great. It's, you know, it people, did a people may not know out. what we're talking about, but when we edit things, we edit them uh, in a kind of a digital virtual world, and and so you put your your clips in there, and you can cut your clips, you can move them over to one place, and maybe you cut it the ending off so you could butt it up against that and so on, and you left it all the way on the other side of the thing, right? So if I'd played that thing long enough, I would have heard the uh, the ending music. But you would have heard the sting. Yeah. You, the, <laughs> thing. the music sting again. So I was like, I heard you, and I, I went, huh. I opened up the program, and I hit, you know, hit end, mm-hmm. and boom, there it was. I just deleted that little piece, and oh, we're okay. Yeah. So I, uh, I have some exciting things going on here at the house. I've, been, I've made some purchases. Oh, boy. I, I'm going to purchase the radio. Board. I hate people with money. Anyway, no, no, I had money. You know what I did? I sold a very expensive Gibson guitar last week on eBay. Oh, really? Yeah. Can I ask you how much you got for it? Uh, I got uh, about 1600 
Oh, really? Okay. That's a real expensive Gibson guitar? Well, I could have gotten more for it. It's a Gibson custom handmade guitar from uh, Bozeman, uh, Bozeman, Montana. I just haven't played it since before I met my wife. And so it's sitting there gathering dust, and I want my media room, my home theater done. So I bought a yeah. really nice 4K projector and a 125-inch screen. And I'm about to plunk down 700 bucks on uh, sound uh, modeling for the room, you know, okay. sub uh, base, uh, what do they call them? I don't even know what the hell they're called. You're putting them in the corners of the room and then things that go around the, around the, uh, the interior of the room to cut down on all the, so you know. So you're going to have a 125-inch screen. 125-inch screen. And a projector to, to put it up on. Yeah. Now, how much did that projector set you back? It, the projector was cheaper than the damn. The thing that's costing me the most that I'm choking on is the sound, uh, the sound modeling stuff. You know, to make the room sound good. Yeah. That's going to cost 750 bucks, and the projector cost me uh, 649. I think. Really? It's 4K. <laughs> and projector. have you seen the quality on this it, thing somewhere else? My neighbor. That's what you know. We had a little. Uh, uh, we had a little block party here about a week and a half ago. Yeah. And he has this projector I've been looking at. It's the Ben QHT 2050. Yeah. And for the money, it is like one of the best projectors on the market. So I pulled the trigger and I bought that and I was measured. I could have gone bigger with the screen, but I thought 125 was enough. So, um, <laughs> it's going to be sick. I can't wait to get it. Really? I get it tomorrow. Yeah. So how clear is the picture once you blow it up on a 125-inch screen? It's like you're in a movie theater. Really? Yeah, absolutely. Well, movie theaters uh, have 4K. Some of them have 5K, but most of them have 4K. You can't tell the difference, though. Oh, I, I still can't tell the difference on my 4K, 4K TV downstairs between that and uh, good, like, uh, Blu-ray 1080p. I can't. My so you have a whole room just as a theater? Yeah. yeah. So, it's so, got two French doors that open up. So in other up. words, nobody can stay with you because one of the rooms is your studio. Another room is a theater. I, I still have this. Uh, I still have uh, two bedrooms here that are empty. Um, this is my third bedroom, and then there's the master bedroom. And downstairs in the lower level, mm -hmm. there's a big game room. And then off the game room is the media room. So it is designed for that. It is no windows in there. It's dark. I'm gonna paint. I'm gonna paint it like navy blue. Mm -hmm. Whole thing, ceiling and all, like a movie theater. You paint them dark. Yeah. And then I'm gonna put these panels up, and I'll have the screen on the front wall. I've already got all the equipment, the subwoofers. I got because I had all that. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna have this this room. I can't wait. So I get it tomorrow. And uh, I'm going to start playing with it to figure out where I have to hang the projector to get that 125-inch uh, screen filled up. Yep. Wow. I think it would be – yeah, I can't wait. But I can't gonna, believe it's that cheap. It's cheaper than it's, buying, a, buying a screen. Oh, absolutely. And it's 3D. Oh, it so is? I, they, they, yeah, I've noticed it's 3D. What brand is it? BenQ, B-E-N-Q. And you, you saw this in action, so you know I it's good. I saw this down the street here. Oh, I've read all the reviews on it. Read the reviews. They, they make a great projector. And any 4K projector right now is just in the thousands. Wow. So the 4K projectors are out. Because I, you know, I, I thought. But then I'm like, well, I've got the 4K TV, and I really can't notice the difference. And I saw the, where, I, you know, he where, played Where did his, you get this BenQ from? I got it from Amazon. Amazon, wow. all from Amazon. I've got to check plus, that out. Plus, I bought. Um, of course, I don't know where I would put it here. I don't have a room big enough to throw. You need. It's not even a matter of space. You need darkness. Ah, uh, okay. Be yes, okay. Because it needs a projector. It's not the black back lit or anything like that. So, and I bought this Harmony uh, device. That what it, or whoever it is. is Oh, Phil Meyer is calling. What do you know? Huh? Wait a minute. He's uh, in Florida, right? Yeah, yeah. Hello, Phil, you there? Phil. Well, apparently we had him and then we lost him. But we have Mike. Hello. Uh, hello. 
Hey, my dad pulled a good one uh, Saturday. Wait a minute. We're talking about something else. Okay. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. I, I mean, apologize. You just come in. You don't hear what we're talking about beforehand, and then you just come in and no, you just start. No, I mean, I don't no, want to get. I know. I apologize. I don't want to bust your chops, but I want to bust your chops. You know, we're finding all the ins and outs of getting a big screen TV, so you need it to be a dark room. You need a dark room because of the, otherwise you'll you you won't be happy with the blacks. I see. Uh, um, you know, yeah. You need a, you need a, at least if if you don't have a room like I do where there's no windows, then the right. next best thing you can do is go out and buy some really good heavy to put over windows. Right. Right. So that you really block it off. So, yeah. But I bought this. Uh, Phil's this having new trouble. Harmony here. remote and the Harmony remote has a hub. So it'll dim my lights in the room, turn the lights down as, you know, it'll do everything. It'll, it'll control all the equipment. Mm -hmm. So with the one press of a button, the lights come down, the projector starts, everything plays. Very cool. I can't wait. Okay. I'm, I'm, I'm having, are you there, Phil? Can't tell whether Phil's there or not. I can't, there seems to be, uh, oh, there, seems there's to be the Jeff. By the way, by the way, let me tell you this. You're perfect sync now, Rob. Yeah, and so are you. See? Who knows what that's about, you know? And most people use Skype in a single back-to-back, -back, you know, most people do one-on-ones. Yeah. So yeah. then most people are seeing it out of sync all the time, yeah. I guess. Yeah, yeah, I would imagine. It does the same thing on my Mac. Not as badly, but it does it on my Mac as well. That's relatively new. It, mm -hmm. it didn't used to do that with a single... Um, you know, with yeah. just two people on the phone. Well, it's it's doing it now. Are you there, Phil? Phil's not there. I think he's there, but I think he's having trouble on his end. I'll bet because he's there. He's not hung up. He's... yeah. Well, who knows? <laughs> who knows what? The I see the whale. I see the, yeah. see I see the, the whale. And he's also... the whale. Yeah, that's been his. He's had that, I think, before as well. Yeah. Is that a whale? I guess it's it is. It's flippers of a... <laughs> yeah. thinner. It's one of his personal photographs, right? I would imagine. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe, you know, I wouldn't think he'd pay for a photograph. You know. <laughs> they're, free, they're free on the internet. They're free on the internet. Well, they, you know, they're not... We think things are free on the internet, but really, if somebody wants to come at you for using a photograph or something, they probably could. True. Beca right. Because they are... So many of them are copywritten. But I use them like crazy, and nobody's asked me to stop. But then again, nobody knows I exist. So that's I like the, the ones that say getting getting across across them. Huh? Getty photo. That's the ones I like. Yeah. Well, yeah. Well, Getty goes out and buys everything. Yeah. You know. Yeah, because they're they're stock built. You could get sued by them. I suppose. Oh boy. They sued a few. Sued a few. And they watch. Getty and those companies watch. Yeah. Anytime I see Getty, I don't take the photo. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but uh, but I I also belong to a service that gives me video and 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 pictures and we have another one for audio as uh, Rob knows because Rob uses it when he does promos so you know are you there Phil? Are you, are you still crying over the Virginia election? Oh yeah, yeah. it was. Well you know uh, Rob is from is in Virginia right now and he's very happy about what happened. Yeah. Very happy. You're, you're, you're going to have uh, Blue Sundays again, huh? That's right. Remember, the, was it the blue law back in, in the day when you couldn't, uh, you only could hold grocery stores and auto parts stores open on Sundays? Oh, I thought you were making a joke about uh, red or blue. Well, that, it was a, d a double entendre, which they, I don't know how to spell. Uh, yeah, you, you don't know how to pronounce it either. Uh, are they, uh, are they <laughs> looking to change the blue? Entendre. Yeah. Entendre. Entendre. Yeah. That, that's just because of my ennui. Yeah, yeah. Are you there, Phil? <laughs> Phil's having They're problems. Probably busting his hotel around. Huh? Anybody watch the president's speech in North Korea? Uh, no. I didn't. Did any of you guys? Let me just let me just try to call Phil here. Let me call him and see if he if he answers. Are you there, Phil? Uh, no, it's it's. It, there, it looks like maybe he answered. Are you there, Phil? Yeah. Are you there, yeah. Phil? Huh? Yeah, I think so. Let me, uh, <laughs> press it. Yeah, there you are. There you are. 
You were having trouble getting into uh, us for some. You were okay. you were having trouble right. getting into us, so I thought I'd call you instead. Don't steal the don't Thank steal you. the towels. <laughs> yeah, we take uh, the towels off. Put on some earphones. Yeah. Uh, anyway, uh, let me see here. Um, yeah. So uh, no, I didn't. I didn't get to see him in Korea. I'm I'm so tired of Trump. I just don't even want to. Pay. Oh, we lost him. We lost. I who knows. But we lost him. He'll be back. He'll Conspiracy. Be back. Huh? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, can you hear me on this? Yeah, I can hear you on this. Yeah. What is it? Oh, oh okay. Good. Oh, uh, what were you using? A microphone of some sort? Uh, yeah. The uh, the 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 thing with the ears. Oh yeah. Okay. Sounds, That's fine. Sounds, like it. <laughs> sounds good. Okay. Uh, good. Yeah. It, uh, it's an eye. Although, although it is, is that you making all that noise though, or is that is that it's, who's making that noise? Is that Jeff? It's Jeff. He was Jeff? he put his earphones down oh, with his oh, mic and everything. Yeah. Oh, I see. Okay. Okay. And and this is this is supposed to be high speed internet. Is it really? No. <laughs> yeah, you got to pay for the real high speed at the hotels. Yeah. You should use your phone as a hotspot. Hey, I, I I asked a question the other night before we get to to all the other stuff. I asked a question, Robin. You have FiOS, right? Yes. Why is it my bill every month is a different price? And not that I'm complaining, because the first month they charged me $336 because it was the month of installation, okay? Then the next one went down to $221. This month I get a bill. It's $167. What, what, why, what, why that disparity? I'm used to getting cable bills that are the same every month. What is that noise? <laughs> What is it? It's not me. It's not me. Uh, it, it, it could have been me uh, trying to open up this cup and make a cup of coffee, but I'll stop. Oh, he's using the coffee machine. Just mute your phone. Yeah. Are you they, mute? they don't yeah. charge you. Well, anyway, anyway uh, so I can't figure out. What, what What is that? Do you have that happen with you? No. Uh, I, but as long as it's trending in the right direction, I wouldn't care. Well, no, it's actually, I, I, I'm i expecting the next bill is going to be 500 bucks, you know, uh, because they told me it was going to be, well, my monthly bill would be 231 a month, okay? And uh, the first month, they said the first one would be high, and I said, yeah, I understand that. And then I got the second one, and it wasn't 231, it was 221. And then this month, I got a bunch of discounts and so on. That were added to it, and it came to one sixty-seven. And I'm going. I guess next month it'll go up to maybe the two thirty-one or something. Why would it? I don't know. Hey, why hey. was I getting all these discounts? It said I had a ninety. I know why you got the discounts, uh, Alex. Why? Because you're advertising for them, and the <laughs> robots pick up on it. Oh, I see. And they automatically yeah. give you discounts every time yeah. you mention it. No, but I. It's I, like. Product placement. Yeah. I don't yeah. understand because it said something like $90 was taken off for uh, signing up or something. But I think that's a $90 minus that I get every month anyway. I don't know. You know, it's crazy. But all I want, if it goes to 231 I will be happy. Then I, And it does it every month. I will be happy. But Why uh, don't you call and ask what I'm, next month's bill is going to be? I'm not going to ask them anything. Okay, have well, you ever tried to no, call? Correct. Have you ever tried to call them? Yeah, not fun. You're not, on. You're on hold forever, and then you're talking to somebody who doesn't know what he's doing. Yeah, yeah. you don't want to get a human involved in this. No, no, you don't want a human eyes looking at it. Just let it go. Yeah, no. don't let just don't look the gift horse in the mouth. Well, the trouble is, you know, you call up for services in this day and age, and nobody, but nobody really has any authority to do anything. So you can't right. solve right. your problem, you know. And I think what happened was I went through a whole period there where I was, they charged me extra money for upping my service, and then they said they'd give me a credit for that. Maybe that credit went on this month. I don't know, you know. But I, I want to know what I, that $90 sign-up fee is. Wait a minute. I, I, I got the bill right here. I'll read it a couple of things to you. And you can you can all tell me. Well, let me see here. Uh, I'm not, I'm not, my arms aren't as long as they... Okay, here we go. Here's the $208 worth of discounts. Okay. There's one discount here that says... Uh, um, let's see here. Um, 
two hundred. Let's see here. Um, Files get a bit connection. One hundred dollars. They have all the charges, which come to two hundred nineteen dollars. Okay. Um, minus my discounts, which is ninety five, which takes it to one hundred twenty four, and then they add on all the taxes and things like that. Right. But then it says services, equipment, and discounts. It says FIOS setup credit, $90, minus $90. Now, I think maybe, oh, that was the credit. Oh, I see for that. Okay. So maybe it's going to be $90 more next month. See, mm -hmm. I don't know. I don't yeah. understand any of this. Yeah. Hey, if, if Alex, you know why the bill is like that? Why? It, it, it goes back to Nixon. I don't know if you remember... Uh, and I worked in a grocery store. My dad was a grocer. Mm -hmm. Remember the price fees, freezes back in the, was it the 80s? Yeah. When, or, uh, when it wasn't they, Nixon. Uh, it was Ford that froze the prices. Okay. With, with inflation what, now, W-I-N. What all, the, what all the suppliers did, wholesale suppliers and their stores, you, you never had anything on sale more than a week. So when they advertised a low price, instead of charging you $99 a month for your like in the advertisement, they charge you their normal rate, give you the discount, so that they can't, if they ever freeze the prices, they're not going to be stuck at the low price. It's all identified as discounts. That's why they did that. And it's been in practice for years. Well, they gave me a file setup credit. Okay, so my discounts amounted to $208 this month. <laughs> now, if they add that 90 then my bill would be 157 257 So that doesn't make sense, does it? You know? No. I, I don't understand any. Hey, uh, did, did the uh, election results come in for New York? Oh, yeah. We got the super mayor again. Uh, there was well, a, well I, who, I know that you got de Blasio. He was pretty far ahead. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, now, wasn't there another election uh, in New York? Another Was it a governor's election? Chris Christie in Jersey. Well, but, yeah, he, no, but and, he wasn't running. And uh, Virginia. Well, hit to replace him. Yeah. Right. So what, what's so the, happened there? Uh, the Democrat won in New Jersey. Oh, Run. really? Uh, the polls closed. CNN declared the Democrat the winner. That's how they yeah. do it. He did such a bad job and left such a sour taste mm. in his mouth for Republicans that, he didn't have, that the Republican didn't have a shot. Hey, you want to get yeah. something funny, Alex? No. Now they were ready to change. Okay. What's about the election? What about, oh. what about the election? In my area, in the city council, District 30, mm -hmm. my sister was like politicking for Elizabeth Crowley. Right now, with 107, 104 precincts reported and three left, mm -hmm. it's 95, 93 votes for holding, and Crowley has 95, 61. This may be a recount. Hmm. I just I just figured my bill out. Okay. I'm sitting here thinking about it because it's driving me crazy. <laughs> the, the, here's what they did. They That's charged me. They were charged me a hundred dollars to install the equipment. Yeah. There was a charge for upgrading of ninety dollars, which they said they would forego. That's what the minus ninety is. Then they okay. took on every bill for three months, add thirty three dollars to pay off the hundred dollars. And I said I'd rather pay it off now. And they said we can't do that. I have no way to do that. So they're taking, they're adding $33 to my bill every month. Okay. Got that? That's why. Okay. So, so, so in, in other words, if I go and I make it 157 minus 30 is what? We'll be figuring that out. It's like 127. 227. Oh, 157. Uh, excuse me. Excuse me. I'm saying it's 257. Minus thirty would make it what? Two two twenty seven. Two twenty seven. That comes out to about what it should be. But next month I'm still gonna have to pay two fifty seven. All right. So until I you get you just my, didn't get the ninety dollars. Uh, uh, they, they, they didn't. I didn't get the ninety dollars credit before. Yeah. So it's it's the next time. Yeah, it's weird. It's strange. But anyway. Uh, but this month I paid off another thirty-three dollars. Why, why they won't let me pay for it at once? I have no idea. So. Your money's no good. <laughs> you know what I had to do today at the bank? This is not That's a very not interesting show, is it, folks? I've got nothing but dull <laughs> stuff. 
Yeah, yeah, I went to the bank. Boy, that's interesting, Alex. Tell us all about it. No, I had, you know, I inherited this money. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, to from from this woman as a trust to go ahead and promote her works after she died. OK, so it's not money that I can spend on myself, you know, uh, but I had to find I had to put I open up a new account in order to put this money in there. It's going to be about seventy five thousand uh, dollars. And so I, I had to open up a, a fourth account over and above what I already have. So now I have four accounts. Well, so wait a minute now. Is that in, 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 Are you going to pay tax in, on that money no, and all that? My, I mean, according, an inheritance. according to my business manager, no, it's not an inheritance. It's oh, not oh, an okay. inheritance. It's a trust that you're in charge of. Yes, that's right. So I, he, I asked my business manager, he said, I'm not going to have to pay a penny. It's not, it's not taxable. <laughs> Because it's, it's, you know, if I were to suddenly pay myself a salary out of it yeah. for administering it or whatever, then that money would have to be taxed. Right, right. Say. What the heck are you going to do with that money? Well, um, I don't know yet exactly. Part of it is we're going to digitize the entire photographic collection, which is maybe two, three thousand photographs, maybe more. Uh, so that digitizing is going to run us between the two of us. He, the other guy, also gets about seventy-five thousand. Actually, short of that because we've paid some storage already. Did you guys already come to an agreement now, finally, or well, yeah, are you yeah. still battling? Yeah, no, we're not battling anymore. We're we're, we're pretty much we're we're we're, on, we're in different uh, ways of doing things, but that's we can do that with our own money. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mahid, he wants to just go and promote her in art magazines and by having exhibitions. And I want to promote her in ways that would bring revenue back in to me. Uh, can, I, can I mention an example? Uh, uh, Jim Marshall, uh, who I had met in San Francisco mm -hmm. back in the early days, uh, Jim Marshall passed away in 2010. Mm -hmm. He left all his photographs to his manager and uh, and she is promoting uh, his stuff through uh, a number of different avenues, including T-shirts. I know Jim Marshall is a lot more popular and well known than. Well, Gal, yeah, no, he already ha he already has a perception. This woman in her whole life never got a a following or perception of her photography, and that's what we're yeah. setting out to do. And I feel that in order to do that, we have to promote her uh, uh, in in the major media. Okay. Uh, in, in a similar way to that nanny, that Myers woman. Uh, well, yeah, they, they, when found, they found her they, collection. They found this woman who had been shooting. She was a nanny, and she had just yeah. been shooting photographs of common people. And somebody <laughs> bought these pictures in a box for like a hundred dollars at a garage sale, and found these things and took them to an art dealer. And he looked at them and said, "These things are incredible." And now she's all the rage. There are books on right. her and yeah. everything. And this guy's made a fortune off these photographs. Well, there's nothing to say that I can't make money off these photographs. And what I want to do with them is I, I want to turn out maybe a documentary on her. And I want to uh, also do a coffee table book. Uh, and I have people in the publishing business who I can talk to. But I can't talk to them until I've got all these pictures digitized. And he has rights to half of them, and I have rights to half of them. I have rights to the first yeah. half of a career. He has the right to the latter part of a career. All the photographs are available to either of us who want to use it in mm -hmm. any medium. Okay, we will. We've just agreed we will let each other use our photographs. It's yeah. just the actual ownership of those photographs has been split up between two people. So, uh, you know, I. Yeah. Who knows uh, if I can if I can see anything out of this, you know? Uh, so I I'm not about ready to sit around and bitch and moan about anything since I've got the rights to use any of the pictures. There is a problem though that I thought of that hasn't been considered, and that is a lot, most of these photographs are of people, uh -huh. and I don't know if she has releases on them. <laughs> uh, the stuff we did with Midnight Blue, we had everybody sign a release. But we don't. We're not in possession of those releases. I'm probably dead by now. Some of them, some of them. Yeah. Uh, uh, Harvey Firestein isn't, and I've got him in drag, and I own one of those. Yeah. Photos, own that photograph. Yeah. You know. 
Might have lost me. Foot on the radiator. What? Yeah. What? What is, what is your? What is your mother? The landlord? Yeah, but you know what? I didn't realize she had the heat on, and I had my foot on the radiator, and I burned it. She's kind of cooking. I'm going to tell the lord. I'm going to go upstairs a second. It's yeah, hot. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I bet you she's Usually playing. the landlord doesn't turn the heat on. Yeah. She's coming on. I'm going to check on her. She's a little, I'll be right there. Yeah. Uh, 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 how much would it cost you to set up a, a gallery to show the... Uh, well, no, he's going to do that. He's going to do that. He, NYU's, he's got NYU ready to do an exhibition. Okay. So, I mean, that's what he wants to do with it. I want to put out a book. I want to put out a documentary. I want to get her name known, uh, maybe hire a PR firm to do a couple of swipes, uh, a couple of weeks of work to try and get some, some heat behind her, you know. Uh, so, uh, we, but first of all, the first thing we got to do is digitize this stuff and see what it is we actually have. You know, I know a lot. I know the stuff she shot with me. And the reason I wanted all the stuff that she did with me at Midnight Blue was that whenever we would go out on a shoot and I was shooting something, she was behind me shooting stills, okay? And so I feel that part of that collection is actually my work as well in a, in a, a secondary way. Uh, and uh, so since I have those, uh, I, I can create some kind of history in a book. And then there's supposedly a lot of pictures she took in the later years of celebrities, kind of paparazzi type stuff. So, um, uh, well, uh, the only thing I was going to suggest was that the Jim Marshall website, you could probably look at it and see what kind of promotions this gal is doing for him. And well, it, there it, may it, be it's some not, things it's, of interest. No, it, it, it wouldn't interest me only because Jim Marshall is a known photographer. You know, be like yeah. me saying, hey, let me see what they're going to do with the Annie Leibowitz estate, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. it's not the same thing. It's the same thing in that she has pictures she took, which today would be of great value if she had ever promoted herself, you know. Yeah. But unfortunately, she never did. And I've got, you know, uh, a, you know, it, it, did anybody watch uh, HBO's show, uh, The Deuce? Oh, no. I, I like it so far, Alex. Yeah. Uh, and it, it, it's all about New York City in 19, I think it starts in about 1972 or 73. And it's all about the sex trade and about uh, peep show machines and all of that stuff and people doing porn. And that's exactly the time that kind of that Midnight Blue came into being about 74. And because of the popularity of the show, there is a renewed interest in kind of the porn scene of that age, and that's what she was photographing a lot of, you know, and uh, you know, porno actresses and actors, and uh, you know, the the kind of things we would shoot, uh, which were like gay burlesque shows and uh, and so on. Uh, and so who was the photographer that did the book on freaks? Uh, uh, you know, and, and twins and things like that. She died. Oh, Diane Arbus. Diane Arbus, yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, so could you put together sort of a book like a Diane Arbus type of Well, I thing? mean, a, a book like a Diane Arbus. Uh, Diane Arbus is her own work, you know. I mean, this yeah, is, I know, but, uh, this you know, she, she uh, you know, yours would be focused on uh, the porno scene in the 70s. <laughs> well, it wouldn't be the porno scene. It would be, it would be just unusual, off-the-wall people of the yeah. times, uh -huh. which she specialized in photographing. Yeah. You know, and uh, she was an excellent photographer. You know, yeah. she was really amazing. Great eye. Uh, and we still have the contact. It's supposedly, uh, I haven't seen this stuff in these boxes, but in each of the boxes are contact sheets. Right. With her cropping thing, with ah. her cropping marks to show how to crop them. Because once we digitize them, what we're digitizing is the full frame. And then what? Do, how do we crop them? And well, right. she gives us a hint as to how she wanted them cropped. We might disagree with her. Uh, are they black them, are and white? Uh, a mixture, B okay. black and white, and, and and color. So on the on the color stuff, can you can you can work on the uh, on the color balance and oh, so forth. Oh, we, on the white we can do a lot of stuff with that. But I'd, I I want to I'd like to know what she wanted. Yeah. You know. Uh, and I could have somewhat of a hint with some of the prints that she made up. We also inherited a whole bunch of of framed prints 
uh, which uh, uh, I'm going to take a couple and put them up here, and he's going to take a couple and put them up in his place. And the rest of them we're just going to, you know, we're going to use in exhibitions and so on. But he's doing the exhibitions, not me, because he knows that world better than I do. So Good. Uh, you know. Uh, but it, it, her name is Anne Rhinestone, and uh, if you know, we may, we may be putting up a website with her stuff on it, so you can see her work. You won't be able to use the stuff because we're watermarking it all. You know. Yeah. Uh, uh, I I wonder if you could uh, uh, do a Roku channel where people could visit and and no, view. No, I wouldn't want to. No, I wouldn't want to. No. Yeah. Uh, oh, by the way, the whale is my shot. I never I never put up a shot that's not. Not mine. Not one of yours. So where are you? You're in Florida, right? Yes, I'm in uh, Orlando, Florida at the moment at the Gaylord Palms. Oh, you're not staying at one of the Disney things? Uh, it's nearby, but uh, no, this is the Gaylord Palms. Very nice. Really? Uh, so yeah. why are you in Orlando? Uh, because that, that, that you, can you do uh, uh, scuba diving there? I'm going to scuba dive in Key Largo on I'm leaving Friday night from here, mm -hmm. uh, flying down to Fort Lauderdale and then driving to Key Largo. And I'm going to scuba on Saturday. So what are you doing Sunday. in Orlando? Uh, it's a, a carpet thing. Uh, another rug convention? <laughs> Not, uh, I'm, I'm, the, uh, I'm the coordinator for the Bay Area stores. So they fly 50 of us in from around the U.S. and Canada and uh, we have a, a, a think tank, and so they hire, actually want to know what I yeah. think. Do you hire hook? <laughs> do you hire hookers? Yeah. Uh, well, you know it depends. Uh, <laughs> if everybody if, kicks in, if everybody kicks in, I see. Yeah, and then you know we take out those fezes. We wear the fez. We wear, wear the fez. <laughs> <laughs> the, 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 <laughs> the mystic knights of the carpet, huh? Yes, yes, exactly. The magic carpet. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, th this is a uh, a meeting. It's called, it's a summit that we have every year for uh, oh the, the 50 of us that are the yeah. guys behind what goes on uh, yeah. with the thousand stores. Well, I watched two two-hour documentaries today, wow. one of which I loved and the other which I hated. There's some channel we've got here on Fios called... Um, called uh, uh, Decades, and they run old TV shows. Ed Sullivan, they run, uh, uh, they run the old uh, Dick Cavett shows, uh, you know, and so on. And uh, they, ran, they put together a documentary called Walter Cronkite and the Rise of CBS News, and it was terrific. It was just absolutely terrific, you know. Uh, all the people from CBS putting their two cents worth in about it and being able to see how good Walter really was and why he was more significant than anybody before him or after him. Uh, and uh, I love the documentary. And then Marjorie wanted to watch the Rolling Stone documentary on HBO. And I usually like uh, Alex Gibney's work, but this thing is, I don't know. I didn't think it was very good. Did anybody see it at all? I didn't see it. Uh, I, I I watched some Planet of the Apes movie on the plane. I was in coach, and uh, you didn't have a lot of choices, and uh, it was awful. Uh, what? Which one? It was real. Uh, the latest one. Whatever the latest one. The, the was. latest one's terrific. Are you kidding me? It's terrific. <laughs> You're gonna call Phil Bright Eyes now. Is war? <laughs> is it War for the Planet of the Apes? Uh, I I don't remember. Uh, it, it was awful. It, really? You know. Uh, the, the the guy, uh, the head ape, his wife and child were killed in a cave. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's the one. Well, the, do you, you do realize that the actor who plays uh, uh, Caesar, whatever his name is, the ape, uh, is that a real ape? May, may get nominated <laughs> for an Academy Award this year. Oh, you kidding? Yeah, they say they feel that performance was amazing. That. It, you know, he's been a digital actor for years. He did King Kong. He did Gollum. And uh, what's yeah. his name? I can't remember his name right now. And uh, they say this performance is, is pretty bravura. Is that really something? You know, because he is the lead in the film. Yeah, yeah. You know, so I don't know why you didn't like it, but that's because you don't have taste either. <laughs> I, 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 well, and, and I I've always said that, uh, you know, maybe you've got better taste in movies, but no comic timing. 
<laughs> I guess I don't. I'm sick of all of it. I don't want to see another computer generated freaking superhero star anything anymore. All of it sucks. Yeah. How about that? It all sucks. Well, we're not going to see any Kevin Spacey for a while. No. <laughs> well, there's the latest on Kevin Spacey. Who's he yeah. Uh -huh. Don't they want to replace him with uh, that guy? Uh, uh, another Kevin? Uh, no, they're going to the they, they're going to take the the, they're going to take the guy who played Caesar in War of the Planet of the Apes, and then yeah. he's going to be digitized to look like Kevin Spacey, and he's going to play in all the future Kevin Spacey films. Yeah. Did he still have to work again? Uh, you know uh, what? Do you think he'll have to work again? I don't even know if he can get on late night television in a old movie of his. Oh okay, <laughs> at the rate this is going. Uh, yeah, true. And I liked him too. Listen to this. You ready? Okay. This yeah. is playing it terribly safe. Uh, you know, I've got to say this. Uh, I'm sure Kevin Spacey is a sleazy, disgusting, vile, pernicious human being. Then he should call the show. Yeah, wait a minute. And I, I, I wouldn't be surprised to find out that he diddled young boys and that he was always for young guys and stuff like that. I, I will buy all of that. Uh, but uh, in, uh, uh, who's making all that noise? I don't know. It's not me. Not me. I'm holding the thing. Yeah. Uh, anyway, um, is your microphone, uh, Jeff, moving near your shirt or something? Nope. No, nope. yeah, it's in your it's in your thing because your blue thing is lighting up underneath you. Yeah, yeah. Really? Yeah. So yeah. just kind of yeah. I don't know. Just sorry. It just hold it away from your shirt. There we go. Anyway, um, uh, um, what what was I saying? So he, you know, he's Kevin. disgusting. Okay, I'm sure he's disgusting. I have every reason to believe that he's disgusting. However, he hasn't been charged with anything. And he hasn't been sued by anyone, right? So, right. so, True. so, all of this are innuendo. Innuendo. Well, it went in someone's end, though. But uh, yeah, <laughs> uh, and hearsay. Anyway, it's all conjecture. It, there is nothing positive. I mean, he didn't get arrested. Uh, there's no sign that he's going to be arrested for anything. So consequently, to suddenly take proactive, uh, to act as though he did all these things, all right, and that he is automatically guilty of them is a bit wrong. And this goes just too far. Has there been hey, wait, any wait, 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 can I tell you? Can I tell you what this is? <laughs> yeah, sure. An appearance by Kevin Spacey that was already taped has been cut from a CBS program next month. It's the Carol Burnett 50th anniversary special. Are you kidding? <laughs> the move is part of a trend among companies having any involvement with the two-time Oscar winner to distance themselves from Spacey as allegations of sexual impropriety continue to swirl around the actor. Netflix has announced, of course, that it, 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 Spacey is leaving the sixth and final season of House of Cards, leaving it hanging in the balance. There are rumors that, uh, what's her name? Um... Uh, who plays his wife on the show, is really going to take the lead. I thought they said today Kevin, uh, uh, the heavy set comedian, uh, Kevin, uh, from that Kevin Can Wait and from... Yeah, uh, yeah I know who you mean. Kevin yeah, James. Kevin James. Kevin who? Yeah, yeah. James. Uh, they were talking about him to uh, take over the spot. Why? He's terrible. Don't know. <laughs> Tell me any God-given reason why. Don't that's know. Saw it on the news. I think that's just a, you know, like a story that never. Well, I'm trying anywhere. to remember who plays his wife. Uh, she was the one that was in the Princess Bride. She was married to Sean Penn. Oh, Robin Wright. Robin, Robin Wright. Yeah. Uh, she, uh, she, 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 she's on that show as the wife, and they think maybe they'll just kill off him and have her be president, or have her be in politics, or whatever. Uh, and the show was going in that direction anyway. So they could do it and get away with it. But still, I'm saying, you know, the guy is... Uh, uh, earlier this week, Spacey's movie, All the Money in the World, uh, got the boot from an AFI, uh, AFI Fest, American Film Institute Festival. I mean, all this on conjecture. 
no solid proof. This is not good. It's not, it's not good the way we're acting. Yes, Jeff. Well, I, I'm thinking about it, and I consider that, that he's probably got fired as, as part executive of the job, and, and that, that's part of their, their contract where they can easily remove him. But I'll bet you they have to pay him. Well, he's executive producer. Well, there you go. And that, are they going to take his name off the credits? He's got to have to sell his piece of the show or do whatever. Yeah. Well, I, you know, is his, or is his executive producer credit contingent on him playing the role on the show? A lot of times people get those credits as long as they're on the show. When they're no longer on them, they don't get the credit any longer. No. You know? But there's another whole take on this whole did you have you heard of uh, a guy by the name of an author by the name of Gay Talese? Yes, I did. Gay yeah. Talese is uh, oh, he, he's he, not he's not gay, by the way. Uh, was uh, speaking to the media at an event in New York City and was asked for his thoughts on this whole mm -hmm, thing, mm -hmm. and uh, he said that this actor should just suck it up. It happened ten years ago, and he's killing people's careers, and he should just suck it up. I that agree. Was, I agree. His uh, take it, on no, this thing. thing that happened with Kevin Spacey happened 30 years ago. Yeah. Hey, you know, you listen to TMZ. Uh, have they talked about Cosby at all since all of this started mm -hmm. happening? No. He's old hat. Hey, listen, yeah. Cosby's a good guy compared to all this shit. <laughs> yeah, he only yeah. had 20. I want, I want Cosby to babysit my wife for crying out loud. You know, I mean, <laughs> it's, it's, uh, he's, it, it, compared to this shit, Cosby is, uh, you know, Pat Weinstein. The Saints. Well, well, Weinstein is just you know. I mean, even with Weinstein, I mean, there are no charges against him. There is one. one no, they said they're gonna they're gonna indict him. No, next they week. say right. they're they're talking about it. You know, uh -huh. uh, and and my you know, I just have a lot of questions about the way we're handling this. Why not let the public? Be the uh, the uh, ultimate arbiter on this. If how do they you do put that? out how if they put out they how, don't go to the movie. Well, they you just as Gaitley said, you you swallow it. Uh, your Netflix. Maybe that's what he you did. say. We're going to do the next season of what House of Cards through? with Spacey because he has not been convicted of anything. There's some people with unha unhappy about the way he acts on the set and so on. But, you know, you, this has been going on since season one, so, you know, what's the big deal? Um, we're going to put the show on, and if nobody wants to watch it because Kevin Spacey is on it, then so be it. I'll tell you the truth, I'd watch it. I love the show. It would probably get better ratings now that all of this stuff has been going on. More people would watch it. I've never watched but it, think, and uh, I might watch it, you know, knowing that there's been all of this uh, uh, Hazarai. Well, I mean, think about this. That he's been cut out of a show honoring Carol Burnett because they're af what are they afraid of that somehow they'll think she's a child molester? What? Maybe he came on to Jim Neighbors. There's a weird, weird vibe going on in this world right now, and nobody wants to be caught when when it's when the fingers being pointed and everybody is so quick to cut ties, and it's just the it's the political climate. I bet world. everybody in Hollywood is scared shitless that there isn't some woman out there that's going to claim that because she slept with a guy one night that he raped her. That's right. 30 you know, years uh, ago. You know, and when you're when you're a star, when you have a name, you you have a lot of chances to get laid. And a lot of those chances to get laid are by women who are really crazy. Okay? Yeah. <laughs> you know, and uh, uh, if it weren't for crazy women, I would have never gotten laid. Okay? Uh Look at me. I'm, I'm hideous. Uh, anyway, the, uh, so you really have to ask the question, is this all fair? You know, and, and I, while I just hope and pray that Kevin Spacey is as big a creep as everybody says he is, uh, I'm not going to prejudge him if I have him in a TV show where he's making a guest appearance, you know? They cut him out of the uh, out of a Colbert show that he had done. You know, yeah, that. he's persona non grata. 
What do they do? Put a cloud over his face? No. They cut the segment, and then one night, they what happened was he shot the thing, I think, on a Monday, and it was for a Friday broadcast. Like on Monday, they do two episodes so that on Friday they can run one of them. By the time they got to Wednesday, this thing had broken, so they wanted to cut him out. So the next night when the audience came in, or that night when the audience came in, they did an extra guest segment, which they then slipped in to replace the Kevin Spacey segment so that they wouldn't have to have Kevin Spacey on their TV network. Yeah, this has gone too far. Yeah, yeah, it's gone too far. And now... With Harvey Weinstein, here's the latest on Harvey Weinstein, and this is this is really fun. Harvey Weinstein has gotten another black eye in his resume, having been officially expelled for life from. Are you ready? The producers. Starbucks. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> uh, and no, the Television Academy. Yeah. Wow. Now any anybody can join the Television Academy. Jeff, you want to join the Television Academy? Go join the Television Academy. Mike, you want to join any? I was a member of the Television Academy. I had to join in order to get my Emmys. To be nominated for an Emmy, I had to be a member of the Academy. So I simply joined. It was like 50 bucks. And I did it for two years. I got my Emmys, and then I quit paying money to them and stopped. So how you get, they kick you out of the television academy. I mean, this is, this is, a, this is a, an organization that will have anybody as a member, okay? You know, Groucho wouldn't want to be part of it because he said, I don't want to join any club that would have me as part of it. You know, this would, it, Tony could join and get the, uh, join and vote on the Emmys too. You get to vote on the Emmys. Take yes. all the Spacey's cards. Yeah, yeah. I got to tell you one thing too, Alex, so Spacey. Yeah. I, I saw an interview over the weekend when it had his older brother. He was giving an interview. Yeah. And he said, I'm um, just what his, his brother is. That, is that Casey his Spacey? His, I forgot what his brother's name. It actually looks like Liberace. He's kind of like well dressed up. He's a limo driver. He said that the father abused the whole family that he he got raped and he was abused the brother and him and his sister yeah so i don't know if he really? can use, i don't know if he's coming forward now he says he hasn't spoke to him in 40 years since his mother passed away that was the last time and it was a good interview actually i thought the guy i mean i'm only watching you know i don't know how honest he is but this he's is all, like, well this all uh, let's, let's this, just say speaking this, all, this, forward, this right? all, all says this all seems very weird however no, I agree. I think I think it is strange. But what happened to Spacey? Spacey? Spacey says that he's going to be treated for a sex addiction. Uh, you know, that's like uh, step one, uh, sex addiction treatment. Step two, uh, Alcoholics Anonymous. Step three, you apologize to everybody. It, it's like, it, and and that's the same thing with Weinstein. He he did the same same thing. But what was this thing with Weinstein? He, he hired this? some. Uh, he hired some uh, 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 agents to look into all of these women and get dirt on them. A, he had a spy network, he, they said. Oh, yeah. That he hired former agents for the Mossad in, in Israel, right? right? And they they would go out and follow these women and harass them and make them known they were being followed and so on. Uh, you know, I don't know what to believe anymore. <laughs> you know, I mean, I, look, uh, look, uh, Weinstein has a big problem. And the big problem isn't a sex addiction. It's being fat and fucking ugly. And right. then you put that image against a guy showing up in a bathrobe and whipping out his dick and jerking off. Yeah, okay. Crazy. And you really get a very ugly image, which then per, uh, per, per, perpetuates itself on the public. So... Weinstein, you know, it's like I said to, to uh, Marjorie the other night. I said, uh, if uh, if uh, uh, Weinstein came on to you, you know, rubbed up against you or whatever, what would you have done? And she said, I would have slapped him. I said, what if it was George Clooney? She said, I'd fuck him. <laughs> I said, so what we're talking about here is prejudice against ugly and fat people. Yeah. Hey, can I say one thing, Alex? Yeah. Who was it that said, uh, you know, the guy could have done something to make himself look a little bit better? I forgot who it was. It was one of the late night 
you know. Well, he did have you know, enough money to go to like a fat farm, you know. But this, Tony this, Soprano wasn't a bad looking guy, and he was fat. Yeah. It's, gotta, it's the way you carry yourself. It's the way you dress. It's you yeah. know. But here's the hypocrisy of Hollywood. Roman Polanski was up for rape, left the country. We gave him an award. Well, you don't, Stacey, not, you, know, you, you don't understand that case fully. There are a lot of questions as I to, give you that, but he did flee the country. You know, he though. had to flee. I'm not saying he's in he had, Tony, flee. he had to flee the country. He had to. He had made a plea bargain with the court. The court was going to just uh, uh, do time served because he had done some days in so jail. What's or whatever. Wait, 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 hold on a second. Let me finish. Okay. So at Polanski was going to do that, and then all of a sudden the judge was going back on his word and was going to jail him. Well, at that point, he just said, I can't, I can't get any fairness here. We already made a deal, and they're not abiding by it. So he got up and left the country. Um, but what's the difference between Spacey, which I think he's wrong if that happened over 30 years ago, which is like you're saying is hearsay, mm -hmm. and they're just stringing him up. Well, one was consensual, right? Well, Polanski well, was... No, I think he Polanski was wasn't... Consent, it was consensual, but she was a teenager. Okay. Well, all right, but still. Okay. Yep, but, I but, advances but to this, on... At the most recent hearings for Polanski in the United States about letting him come back, she went before the judge and pleaded for Polanski, saying no harm, no foul. You know, it was just an incident that happened when I was younger, you know, and, uh, I, uh, and I, I forgive the man and you should too. And they said no. Yeah. Well, you know, I mean, big deal. I mean, to begin with, Polanski was a European to begin with. You know, he he came to this country uh, 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 as a director from another country. So he's used to living in Paris and Europe and Switzerland. See, they come to this country. They send us their rapists. Their, uh, their, their <laughs> that's why we need the wall. Oh, that, that's why we have to put up a wall around Switzerland. You know. Well, that that okay. He was Polish, but he lived a lot of his time in Switzerland and France. So mm -hmm. you know, yes. I mean, it, it's not like he feels terrible that he can't come back, but he'd like to come back, and a, a lot of studios would like him to come back. I mean, the guy's a, a great director. I mean, he's a little old now, but you know, that never stops Clint Eastwood. So you know, yeah. what have you? Mm -hmm. So you know. Uh, I, don't know, it just, I don't know. It just seems kind of odd, though. I don't know what to make of it, really. Well, what I what I make of it is it's it's uh, it, we have to we have to stop with this. It's like a, it's like a, a witch hunt, uh, and you know if somebody has something against somebody, go ahead, go go do something about it. You know, well, this guy that happened to thirty years ago as a kid. If it happened at all, if, you know, you know if, if it happened, it was kind of in roughhousing, you know, or uh, all uh, all that happened is Spacey supposedly he was drunk, picked the kid up, he said like he was a doll, and they threw him down on the bed and jumped on top of him, and the kid got out from underneath him and fell to his inappropriate and left. Oh, wait a minute, where where's the rape? That's you know, what I'm saying. I mean, I'm not yeah. saying it's, good. it's some drunken guy who doesn't know what he's doing. I had a yeah. I had an uncle. I said yeah. this the other night, Duckamucka, we used to, I used to call him. And, and he used to like to wrestle with me on the floor. My God, I bet he was, he was a pederast, and he was getting a boner underneath that baggy pair of pants he had. Yeah. yeah. Here's a question. Get him thrown out of the academy. Wait a minute, he's dead. So. Do you think the kid should have just kept quiet thirty over three decades later? We let this go. It just seems to. Well, I think if he was going to complain, they should have complained then. Where were his parents? This That's kid. This kid was. A, this, kid, exactly. this, kid, this kid. This kid was working. Exactly. This kid was working on Broadway. Uh, he came over with another theater. He came over to this party that Spacey had. He was bored. He was fourteen at the time. He was bored. He went into Spacey's bedroom and started watching television. OK, that's when this incident happened. Well, I want to know where the fuck were the parents, a 14 year old kid out that time of night going to a party for adults? With alcohol. He has no place being there. Uh, exactly. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Uh, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that. What I'd like to know is why now did he. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Why? Why now? 30 something years later. 
I don't know. I well, mean, he, well, well, you know, this I mean, could have been bothering him for 30 years. But when you just kept it in the back of your mind to listen, I'm not going to come forward. What am I going to get out of this? Well, well, and, well and right now, the climate is to out everybody who did anything. I think there's more yeah. that's going on here. It's a mob reaction. Yeah. I mean, I, if I was really well known right now, if if, uh, if I wasn't just doing some dippy little internet show and I were really well known right now, I'm wondering if some women in my life wouldn't come forward and try and accuse me of things. I, I mean, I can't think of anything improper I have ever done in, along that line. OK, but some woman could say, oh, well, he took me to his place and he gave me some drugs and then I got high and we fucked, you know. And and I I'd be doing staving off uh, all the people who are trying to kill my career too, just because some woman says something, and I just you know that's why I guess I'm a little more I'm a little sadder about this thing, and a little more uh, bothered by it than I would normally because this does is something that could happen to me could have happened to me, just by somebody and I've got to tell you I I've led nothing but an exemplary life where uh, these kind of things are concerned. I've never raped a woman. I have never coerced a woman, uh, you know. But I have privately had sex with women who came over to my place. We got a little high, and we fucked. Um, it's my word against hers if she wants to say I raped her or that I plied her full of drugs and then had my way with her. You know, and so I think about that, and that's why I'm not sympathetic to a Kevin Spacey. I'm not sympathetic towards uh, John Heilman, another one, the guy over at uh, MSNBC. Uh, right. I'm I, I'm not, um, you know, I'm not standing up for them, but I do feel there needs to be more John fairness Heilman. because I would want it in my situation if that were the case. What was the uh, situation with the? Spacey guy, was he looking to improve his position in the market? Well, where... he's got a job. He's on Star Trek Discovery. He's a, one of the, I'd say if there, if, if you talk about maybe the top five actors on that show, he's in the top five. Okay, okay so, so he... he's, you know, I mean, you know, maybe he isn't making a fortune off of that. It's syndicated television. Well, it's CBS, though. It's CBS. Um, so, I mean, maybe, uh, maybe he does want something better, but he's got something. So I don't know why. In fact, he's got something. I don't know if you really want to taint it by letting us know all about your sexuality. Yeah. You know, we just want to watch you without bias. Although he does play, he does, he does play a gay man on the show. However, wasn't yeah. John Heilman in Magnum P.I.? Didn't he play the, uh, no, that, the guy that ran the estate? That's John. What was his name? It wasn't Heilman. Uh, no? No. It was close to that. Though. No, it wasn't. It was. Uh, it did start with an H, and it was it ended with an M-A-N, but I can't remember what the name was now. Oh, all right. Uh, but, uh, no. He was British or he acted? No, this is, this is the guy who appeared on, uh, I don't know if you watched uh, Showtime's uh, The Circus, about all about the election. Uh, where they I, I see it. I haven't watched it. Yeah, that's the Tileman show along with his partner. They both wrote some books on Hillary Clinton and on the various campaigns. Mm -hmm. uh, they wrote uh, that one they made into an HBO movie about the uh, the, the countdown in Florida. Um, uh, the, these guys are, are very good, actually, and Heilman's very good as a reporter. But, you know, he's finished. He's he, it, 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 He'll be doing... Uh, He'll probably be doing like Keurig commercials at three o'clock in the morning eventually. You know, I, it, it's sad. It's sad. It's it, it. But if these guys are creeps, then they deserve it. But they deserve it with fairness is what I'm saying. You know, bring the charges against them. You know, uh, it, 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 you know, if all these guys did is rub up against you, maybe it was by accident, you know. Uh, I, I just don't know. I don't know. Where does it stop? That's all I'm asking. You know, I wish we had Renee here because Renee has the female take on it. And I would love to have the female take on this situation. 
But she doesn't appear and to be calling. Like and we really don't even know what kind of person he is because you never met him. Well, who, well I, I'm I, look, I'm imagining that Spacey is a real creep. OK, they say that he made the atmosphere on the set of House of Cards from season one, a very toxic environment. Uh, that's how they described it. It's a toxic environment. Toxic, they said. Yeah. Huh? Toxic. I don't know what you were trying to say, Phil, but you just froze up so we can't hear you. Um, anyway. Um, yeah. Yeah. So. Uh, oh, John Hillerman. Hillerman is who you were thinking of, yes. Uh, anyway, <laughs> did you think this guy going all the way back to Magnum P.I.? Yeah. He was yeah. a kid when that show was on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What do you think about all of this, Jeff? Have you you know are you sick and tired of the purge that's going on? I it kind of I'm not that personally I'm not that concerned about this happening for these people. Yeah, they've kind of got themselves in a lot of crappy situations. It's not just one. Well, you know I I've said this before, Jeff, is that. These guys are probably, these people are not nice people. Yeah. Weinstein's not nice. So everybody in Hollywood is so happy that this guy is getting the shiv between the, the shoulders, right? Uh, it's just desserts. Right. He, and and yeah. there's some things about Spacey, too. Uh, you know, I've seen him act, and I mean, he, he's, he's a pretty good actor, but... Uh, I don't have any personal interest in him, and particularly if uh, if he's done this kind of stuff several times. I'm sure this is not just a one deal. Listen, he's lucky to get a, a show like House of Cards on the air because as an actor, he's not one of those actors that can open a movie. You know, that you hire because people are going to go see the movie in spite of the fact that it sucks. There are very few of them. You don't, you don't the think that his performance in American Beauty uh, was how long stellar? Ago, how long ago was that? No long time. Well, you, know, you but... can only have so many failures and then you're not really considered bankable in Hollywood. And I don't think well, he's bankable. Yeah. I don't think if you look at the take on American Beauty... Uh, did Didn't he well, get an Academy it, Award or he something? Got, he got an Academy that? Award for that. I think the picture did, too. I may be mistaken. Yeah. But it was up. At least, I don't think that film made a lot of money. No. You know, so well, what I'm talking about is in Hollywood, you make the big money if you can open a film. Uh, what's her name? Uh, Lawrence. Jennifer Lawrence. Uh, she makes a lot of money. She's in, in fact, she's the highest paid actress in Hollywood. She made $56 million last year. Uh but she can open a film sometimes. But she isn't even a guarantee. You can do a film yeah. like The Passenger, and it failed like crazy at the box office. So you know, but but she it, in in a uh, in a uh, you know a, a, an acting role in which she has to really bring out the goods, she can do it. She's a good actress. So she, she's bankable because her name is positive. Okay, yeah. Spacey. What kind of name did he have? Did you ever say, I got to go see this new Kevin Spacey film? No. Nah, no. And that's yeah, that. That's I'm going to say, somebody else can replace him. Yeah. I, he equally I, is good. Uh, yeah. And I would what? be very easily, easy to tell you that I'd be happy to see any film with Jennifer Lawrence tits in them. So, you know. Uh, <laughs> I, I, oh, excuse me. That was in bad taste, folks. So. Plead the fifth on that one. Uh, now he's going to call us. So, so what about our president in, uh, see, we can get to the president, the last 15 minutes of the film, of the film of the show. Uh, what, what do you think about the, the fact that he, he's kind of backing off? Well, there was bad weather in Korea and he didn't go to the DMZ. Yeah, it wasn't the DMZ. It was a no man's land that he was going to go to. Now I don't know what the yeah, difference they, is from that and the DMZ. No, they said that it was the DMZ is where he was headed. Well, he said he didn't really want to go no because he land. thought that would be trite. He said everybody does that, you know. Which it was the first but time he said he didn't anything go I agree with because of the weather. 
he didn't want to get his hair. Weather. Well, I think the <laughs> weather was an issue because he was traveling on his helicopter. Oh, oh. Well, you know, and, but and there was one interesting that thing. The, that the weather was inappropriate for taking yeah. the and it was, helicopter with the president in that area. Yeah, and it was also inappropriate to put his hair in that jeopardy. <laughs> That's it. You know, uh, the one thing, the, the one thing, this is a little, a little change, uh, that the Saudis shot down a Yemeni-launched uh, missile that was uh, Iranian-supplied. And uh, therefore, that technology must work. And why can't they shoot down the missiles that North Korea are, is sending into the uh, Sea of Japan? Well, there's no reason to shoot them down if they're not going to hit Japan. You see, I yeah. mean, they, yeah, they could shoot them down. But that would also be considered, a provoc believe it or not, a provocative action against North Korea. Now, if North Korea's yeah. got one and it's coming down, it looks like it's aimed right directly for Japan. Then you then you send up your missile, you know. I and mean, you shoot it. What, 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 well, you know, the Saudi one, uh, the, the the Saudi one was aimed for their airport. Yeah. And, uh, right. Uh, so I, I was. Uh, it was interesting that they were able to shoot it down, and now no, they're they, saying we're able to shoot down most missiles headed our way. Okay, it's yeah. not like they get here in three seconds and we don't have time. You know, take some. It would take a missile from North Korea. What they say, something like twenty minutes, twenty-five minutes to get to the west coast of the United States. Wow, that's moving. That's moving, but you know, in that time, you've got enough time to shoot it down. Yeah, and and those missiles you send up are dead accurate. You know. Wow. Yeah, it took me six and a half hours to go from San Francisco to to uh, oh. Orlando. So <laughs> if you shot it down. Do you get a nuclear yeah. explosion in the sky? I don't know. I, I don't know. The question is, see, there are a couple of problems that he's got to overcome before he can put a nuclear device in the nose cone of one of those things. One of which is, it's got to be a nose cone that will not be affected by the heat of going up in space. Right. Right? And will not blow up in the air coming back down because you get a lot of that heat and friction and so on. Right. So that's a big part of solving the problem. And they've got the rocket and they've got the nuclear device, but I don't think they have the delivery system that could deliver it accurately and have it explode on, on impact. Now, the Chinese have sent up missiles into space, and don't they use the same stuff we do, which is the uh, uh, ceramic tile technology uh, that keeps the uh, the capsule cool. Uh, why wouldn't it keep the uh, warhead cool? Would the, would the warhead be accurate like that? Well, I'm saying that it's, it's not impossible because we have missiles that are capable of doing that. But part of the technology he has to develop, there's, a, there, there's the nuclear side, he's got that. There's the rocket, he's got that. But he needs that nose cone that's able to not have that thing blow up in midair. And let's face it, if, if, if a nuclear... I don't know if it would blow up as a nuclear device unless it hits the ground. I mean, I'm not, I don't know that much about the technology, okay? I'll leave that to Kim Jong-un. Because if it did blow up in the air, it's, it's still going to kill a ton of people. I don't think... It, it, it depends. If it's way up, uh, it's not going to. If it's out in the middle of the Pacific Ocean, it's not going to. It's going to send a lot of uh, nuclear debris out into the atmosphere. Yes. But I, I don't know exactly how those things work. I don't know that the kind of missile you're yeah. talking about has that much of an impact area. Yeah. You know? Yes, Jeff. Uh, Jeff. Jeff? I, I worked 50 years ago. I worked for Boeing on a B-52 missiles and atomic bomb stuff. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And... But what the technology was 50 years ago is totally obsolete. I would assume. Yeah. And so anything that I knew from then probably doesn't exist. Right. But uh, we had pretty good missiles that, that were on the plane. That, uh, in addition to bringing the atomic bomb wherever it was going to be, which is typically to Russia, 
that we also had seven <coughs> missiles on each side yeah. uh, to so so called protect them. Right. Okay. Was that like on like the Enola Gay? Yeah. I guess that's what it is. Yeah. That was a well, anyway, 52 that dropped here in Hiroshima, right? Yeah, right. Yeah. But it, it, then I don't think they didn't have the kind of missile stuff to go with it, and and it was not the B-52. The B-52s, no. I don't think they came up until the 50s. Okay. Oh, so... so uh, you, you're, freeze, you're freezing up there. You're, 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 up there. I, I hope you paid for the really high-speed... Oh. Internet bandwidth there. You can't surf and be on GapNet at the same time. Yeah. <laughs> when you start, yeah, surfing, it'll kill you. Yeah. Put your scuba dive equipment on. Maybe that'll work. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, I, I, talking about the B fifty two and 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 my experience there. Mm -hmm. We also did something which was very interesting, and that is that we modified the airplane mm -hmm. to put by, uh, things on there that could go in the ocean mm -hmm. and blow up ships, mm -hmm. okay? And in, remember Vietnam? Mm -hmm. That's kind of the... The big part about the way Vietnam was uh, was ended <laughs> because they they used to blow up North Vietnam's uh, uh, rivers and uh, harbors and things like that. Right. And uh, the Russians didn't really want all of their ships to be blown up because that's where they they were getting their equipment. Hmm. Uh, uh, they're they're bullets or whatever. So uh, you could actually. Nola Gay was a was a B twenty nine. Yeah. yeah. The Nola Gay was a B twenty nine. Yeah. A super fortress. Uh, anyway. Yeah. Well, you that's know. what they. That's what they. That was the way I went to uh, become an engineer instead of. Uh, instead of going there to shoot people. Let me bring up one more topic here before we uh, close this whole thing off, and this will probably take us to the end without any real trouble. Uh, I'm watching TV yesterday, and all of a sudden, uh, here's Lester Holt, and he's in that town where those people got killed, right? Mm -hmm. Terrible tragedy. <laughs> How many people, 23 people, something like that, killed in a church? Yeah. Uh, and a terrible tragedy. But there's Lester Holt. Here I am in blah 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 Texas, no, I and uh, I, uh, you know, and and we're reporting on this, and I'm thinking to myself, you fucking piece of shit, you 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 low life exploiter of human tragedy, how can you do this to these people? You know, this is a time when they'd like a little quiet in their lives. They don't want some goddamn anchor guy shoving a microphone up their ass. Uh, so I said, I'm going to go look at the other networks, and the first one that doesn't have somebody there anchoring the news, I'm going to start watching them from here on in. Well, I'm still watching You're Lester watching Holt. Fox. I'm still watching Lester Holt. <laughs> they were all there. Of course they are. Every single one of them. And I'm thinking, do they really think this improves the news? Do they all they the only reason they're doing it is to exploit the situation to get people to like them more? And I just find it disgusting. I find it just horrible. Did you notice that the the newscasters, other than Lester Holt, were white because it was a white church? And usually, when there's a black church shooting, they send back a reporter. You're right. They do. You're absolutely right. Yeah. 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 Uh, I, I don't think there were any black people killed in this incident. I think it was no, a, it was a no. pretty white town, you know. Yeah, only about five hundred people. Yeah, uh, and what, how they said was that you know, in a situation like this, you get like twenty three, twenty four people killed. Almost everybody in that town knows somebody who got killed. And they actually wiped right. a whole generation of a family because they killed a mother and she was pregnant and 
I mean, it, they wiped out a whole generation of them. Uh, it wasn't the they, it was the guy. I've said it yeah, once, I'll say it again. Guy. You'd be better off being an atheist. <laughs> safer. <laughs> safer being an atheist. Yeah, I want to know how a religious person uh, parses that. Uh, it was God's will. No, you know what they're thinking? What? They're thinking that this is the right before the rapture where people just are taken. Wow. Oh, really? Yeah, that's the whole thing, right? That's the whole rap. People are going to start being taken. Wow. Taken off this planet. I've provided security at a temple uh, in Vallejo, and, uh, you know, they, they got plenty of armed people out in front and in the congregation to make sure that nothing goes on. And, you know, if somebody at the, in that service was armed, they could have taken that guy down. And uh, it was happened to be just somebody who was looking from across the street mm -hmm. that went after the guy after the fact. But he had already done his damage. Wow. You know? Well, all, but, I, uh, all I know is uh, when is this going to stop with these damn news people getting in the way of a tragedy? You know, you can, you can report it just as well by being in New York City and being respectful to those people there and having your reporters on the scene do filing the local reports. reporters you, 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 the reporters that you send out there to cover the thing or whatever but, but there are back. local ones too yeah uh, but, that they could have just gotten a feed from but the idea of the anchor guy actually anchoring the newscast and by the way only the first 10 minutes of the news was this deal the rest of it was stuff about trump and blah 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 and so on and so forth and then maybe the kicker story at the end was another feel good feel bad story about the situation but Outside of that, I mean, what couldn't he be? Why couldn't he be doing that in New York? And then you just uh, go to the reporter. So and so is over across town, and here he is. You know, there's no need for Lester Holt to be there. You yes. know what it no, is? The system ratings. failed, Mike. It's ratings. That's what they're doing. Well, it comes close to ratings. Right, well, that's, Time that's, that's, it comes to ratings. You know. Is this true, though? I think they yeah. think that the public is going to perceive that they really are big-time reporters and they know how to handle situations like this. But tell me, is there anything, any reason for them to be there and any benefit that the situation is going to have as a result of them being there? So news has left the newsroom, and that's the way it is. If there's a hurricane, they're there. If there's a well, shooting, Well, I watched this documentary on the history of CBS News. I think and it froze. You, and, and you look at the way that it was. Oh, I know. And yeah. it, uh, in compared to why, how it is now, and there were so many ethics back then, you know, and it's, you would have never seen Walter Cronkite. Walter Cronkite never left that anchor desk except for once, and that was when he went to Vietnam to check in on the Vietnam War. It was the only time he had ever really done that. What about? But what he about wasn't anchoring the news from there. He was sending back reports. Yeah, but what about all the? I know because I used to watch. I was I was fascinated by it, and he did a lot of coverage from the Cape for all of the. Uh, oh, that that he would he would do those because he he would anchor all the all the launches. Yeah, and he was awesome. I it, loved it, but that. he didn't go there because he thought being him being there was going to make things better. He was no. there because it was it, it was a story he loved to cover as a reporter. I don't think they're there because they think they're going to be. Uh, better, I think they're there because they want to bring the news from where they want to bring you the news from where the news is. It's salacious. They also don't want the competition to get it and not them. You know, if the competition is there, they got to be there. Right. I mean, and they are. They're all there. It's just the way yeah. it is. That's, you know. To try and get uh, the head, you know, get ahead. Hey, listen, we run out of time here, uh, and and just, a different angle. And and just in time, what? They want a different angle. You know, if they're down there, they try to get a different angle than the other guy. Yeah, well, you know? they're not getting it. It's all the same story. The same people are dead. The same person did it. You know, uh, you know, and and plus, bleeding these stories dry is just, you know. It, it, Just leave it alone after after you get done with it. it leave it alone. You know, tell us some stories that are really important to us personally that affect all of us. That does not affect us. That is a looky loo story which becomes almost um, uh, uh, a circus, ghoulish 
ghoulish in yeah. its demeanor. Ghoulish. That's exactly right. Yeah, exactly. Anyway, thank you, uh, everybody, for joining me tonight. Mike, thank you for being there. We really appreciate it. Uh, and uh, thank you, Phil, for calling us from Florida. Hope we hear from you tomorrow night. Jeff. I'll try oh, and get a better internet. than that. <laughs> always a pleasure. You knock down a wall. Uh, pay. Yeah, pay for it. <laughs> Rob, thank you. And, of course, Tony. See you. Thank you as well. See you hey, later. Everybody, why don't you wave goodbye so they can see you go? Okay, there they go, ladies and gentlemen. That's our citizens panel. Uh, let me hang up on them here. Oops, uh, because I got to get the... Uh, Skype ready for Jack and Amy, who are next over most of this same gab net. And then after that, at 1 o'clock this morning, hey, you love them? Okay, it's called Connections, and they'll be here doing their little show. I'll be here again tomorrow night, same time, same station in life. In the meantime, if you see her, tell her I love her, okay? Bye. <laughs>